you are witnessing my journey from broken clueless to richer and wiser. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlotte, this is Big Girl Budgets. My channel is all about cash budgeting, cash stuffing, getting on a debt-free journey and getting my big girl pants on and getting on with it. So today I thought we would have a little chat. I thought that might be quite nice. Um, I, uh, I'm not doing any cash stuffing today. Um, I'm not talking about budgeting today. We are talking about my debt journey. So, um... My debt story actually starts in childhood, and no, I wasn't in debt as a child. <laughs> um, when I was a child, my family and I never really talked about money. Um, we were quite comfortable. My mum and dad both worked very hard, and me and my brother always had what we needed, um, but we didn't talk about money. If I ever said to my mum, how much was that, or... Um, you know, how do you pay for that? She would normally say something like, I don't really like talking about my, about money. I think it's rude. Yeah, we didn't really talk about money. Um, and I was born in the early 80s, so you didn't really learn about money in school. Um, and with me being slightly impulsive and did like to do things spare at the moment, um, I just didn't really have great discipline around money. Um, fast forward to my early 20s um and I got married um and my then husband took care of all the finances I just had my spending money um and didn't always make it last but you know that he took care of all of the like we paid our rent we paid our bills we didn't make like amazing decisions around money but everything was paid and that was fine saving was like an afterthought so when we split up, I was around the age of 27, um, I um, didn't really know how to take care of the finances. Um, I was just sort of like fumbling my way through life. Um, I wasn't in a really, very good place. Mentally, I wasn't well. Um, I was struggling to bring up two children who have additional needs, um, living on my own for the first time in my life. Um, and... I made really sort of poor decisions. Um, I was just throwing money at situation basically. So if I'd had a bad day, I um, and I wasn't able to cook, I'd buy a takeaway. If the children were really difficult and perhaps I'd been I'd not handled it very well, um, we'd go on a day trip. Um, I was always just throwing money at things, and I would never have money left at the end of the month to cover bills and things. So I would have two decisions: I would either get more in debt or I'd ring my parents again um, and ask for some financial help. Um, my parents were coming around to help me quite a lot. Um, my eldest was really struggling with a lot of things and um, my eldest child, their behaviour um, can be quite challenging when they're struggling with things. Um, so um, my parents would come around a lot. and. So about six years ago, um, we made the decision to pool our resources and uh, move in together, to choose a house together. So the mortgage is in their name. I pay contributions. Um, and the idea was that they were there to help me and we'd be there to support each other. And during COVID, it was a real blessing um, because I wasn't on my own. Um, but I also had this sort of vision that I would get financially stable and be able to move out again in a few years time. Um, but the children were under the impression it was their forever home. So, I, you know, it was a little bit like, oh, what do I do? do? Do I sort of stay while the children are still thinking they're, they're happy and comfortable? Or do I save to move? And I kept sort of going through, bouncing through this. Um, in the meantime, my mental health still wasn't great. Um, I was diagnosed with um, a mental illness, which I have received treatment for, and generally I'm a lot better. Um, so, uh, and that was as a result of the split. Um, it was a traumatic split. So you can imagine I'm living on my own for the first time with the children. They need extra help. I need extra help, but I'm not getting it. Um, and then... Um, 
on top of that, I'm getting more and more in debt. And then my parents sort of say, let's move in together. So we all choose a house together and move in together. And the idea was for me to, in my mind, to sort of like get on, you know, um, but I never did. Um, I kept doing the same thing. So I, I realised I had a spending issue, not an income issue. I mean, I've got a low income, but I'm living with two other adults. So I have more disposable income because I have less bills because they're split three ways. Um, but I was still creeping more and more into debt. So that became obvious to me that it was a spending issue. Um and about four or five years ago, I Googled how to get out of debt um, and I came across lots of different things. But particularly on YouTube, I came across um, a YouTube channel called She's on a Budget. And back then um, she was m more doing just cash stuffing um, and she was working her way out of debt. And I was thinking, I can do that. I can get myself out of debt. So I started doing, I started cash stuffing. I bought a couple of binders um, and I started cash stuffing. And um, I I did actually make some progress and I was really quite pr proud of myself. But then the next time I had a little bit of a slip, I didn't have any buffer at all. I had no emergency fund. I had no buffer in my budget, um, no cushioning at all. Um, and so when I, whenever I overspent, it impacted my weekly um, cash stuffing amount and then I'd end up with nothing left at the end of the month and I'd be relying on the credit cards again. Um, and then I just got fatigued and I just stopped doing it and I went further into debt. So by this time I had three credit cards that were all maxed out. Um, I started off with one. Then I got a 0% balance transfer and transferred it over, but then didn't get rid of the first one. Then I didn't pay my 0% one off. And so I did another balance transfer and then didn't close this one. And then I maxed all three of them out. I also had a loan that I got to pay off those credit cards, but I didn't close them down. So they all got maxed out again. Um, and, um, and then I bought a van which has been amazing and I don't regret it, but I did it on finance. And so now, so by this point, this was about two years ago, I was in £21,000 worth of debt, um, working a low income job um, and not doing anything about it. Um, so last year, 2023, I decided enough was enough. I had reached rock bottom. I had received a letter from a credit card company saying um, you hadn't paid, I hadn't paid my bill. I knew I couldn't pay it because I'd run out of money, um, but I didn't tell them I couldn't pay it. I just put my head in, in the sand. Um, and again, turned to Google how to get out of debt. Um, and it came up with this website um, that said, um, you, it, your debt will be written off in five years if you just sign up to us. So I filled in the information. I started receiving lots of phone calls the next day. I still receive phone calls now um, from debt management companies. And it was from a debt management company. And, um, well, actually, no, the initial phone call was from um, an intermediate, an intermediate company. So they were um, sort of trying to get me to sign up with um, their client, who was the um, debt management company. So there was first phone call was from um from a different company um who were promising me all sorts of things that I later found out not to be true so they were saying um but firstly they were really really sympathetic and really really lovely and they were saying you know we, we understand you're a single parent you don't earn a lot of money you know the society sets you up this way it's not your fault um and so I felt like somebody understood and I felt like this weight leave my shoulders and I was like I'm going to be taken care of it's going to be sorted and they were telling me that I can um basically say that I um that my bills are really really expensive so that what I actually have to pay in debt is really really small and I just pay that for five years I can save my money have extra money in my back pocket um and by the end of that five years that extra money that I have saved through paying less debt um, and basically lying about my budget, um, I can um, use to start again or treat my children or go on holiday or whatever. And I just thought this was great. I was like, that's amazing. 
Um, so I got put through to the debt, the, the debt management company who were like, yeah, 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 that's all fine. That's all true. Um, I then signed up, made the first payment, uh, had a phone call from the company, say, just see how I was getting on. And I told them about how, um, I, uh, was going to like be putting this extra money by for, for when I finished the term in five years time. And she was like, no, that's not true. If you have extra money, that money you need to pay to your creditors. If your creditors um, think for one second that you've got more money available than you say you have, then um, that needs to go to them. And if you're being dishonest, then the IVA, sorry, but I should have said, this was an IVA, which is, a, which is an independent voluntary um, agreement. Um, the, IVA, the IVA will fail. Um and I was like, uh, but I've been told all this. And she's like, I'm really sorry. I don't know who's told you this, but it's not true. Um, if you're spending less than you say you are, then the IBA can fail. Um, so I was like, okay, so I had to think about it. And then um, I had another phone call from somebody else within the same company who then said, right, we've had a meeting with your creditors and they've said, um, because you've got two vehicles, you need to sell one of your vehicles and give them the money. And I was just, I was just floored by this point. I'd not been told any of this. I'd been, it'd been sort of like the IVA had been sold to me as a knight in shining armour. Um, and I was sitting on my mum's bed crying to her. I decided that I had to tell her. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry. You're going to be really disappointed with me. I've got myself in debt. Um, I can't get out of it. I've tried to get help, but now I'm going to have to sell one of my vehicles. And if I just sort of like explain to you why I've got two vehicles. So I've got my car because I work for a district nursing company, a company, district nursing um, team uh, within the NHS. So I'm driving from house to house giving treatment. Um, and so I need my car. It's a small family petrol car. So it's perfect for driving around. My van, which I bought, which I, I you know, I know I recognise I shouldn't have done it because I couldn't really afford a finance. Um, but my van, well, I, if I wasn't in debt, I could afford it. You know, I could afford to take on that debt um, if I wasn't already in debt. But I, um, yeah, so I bought the van um, and kitted it out to be a small a micro camper so I can take one or one or both the children away for the day or one of the children away camping um, for the night and um, or a couple of days. We've been on a road trip with it as well, and it's it's brilliant. It really just adds some richness to our life that actually doesn't cost that much once it's paid off as well. Um, you know, camping is so inexpensive, especially if we go wild camping or on camp for, with fields that have no facilities. Because I've got a little toilet, I've got water on board, I've got storage for food, I've got cooking facilities on board, so I don't need to spend a lot of money. Um, but, yeah, so... I was like, well, I can't sell my van. I'm still paying for it, for starters. But also, it's a way of connecting with my children. Um, I said, I can't always get them away together because of the way, the, the issues that they have. Um, so it's an affordable way of spending quality time with them. Um, and they were like, well, we'll go and talk to your creditors. Um, but this time, I was like beyond rock bottom at this point. I just felt so, it was. it just really, really got to me, the fact that I got myself into debt. I'd been told that I could trust this company to get me out of debt and to help me pay my way out of it and then write off the debt at the end of it and that I could start again and it'd be like I'm 18 again with a new credit score like zero credit score and I could work my way up again and I just felt completely well I was just flawed um and um I cancelled I cancelled the IVA I thought I can't do this this is not what I signed up for um and so that got me doing a little bit of research and there are a lot of debt management companies out there that will persistently call you once you once they've got the information. I still get calls now. They call you and they try to make you feel like, you know, it's it's not your fault. You'll be OK. Trust us. We'll help you. And although they do follow the government guidelines and they do get you out of debt, they take a cut. They take some money from what you're paying. 
so you're, you're paying what you can afford but you're getting out of debt slower than if you had gone with a, a charitable company um and it makes me feel like i can't really I, I i just my trust had broken down by this point with companies because i thought you don't actually care you just want my money because at the end of the day you're getting my money um they're getting a cut of the money that i'm paying towards my creditors so um i went online and i got in contact with a company called step change which are a charitable company and i had a long conversation with them it was free no obligation um and they explained to me different ways of getting out of debt the other company had been very very um insistent that an IVA was the only way that I could get myself out of debt and I had to have a phone when I was signing up for the IVA I had to have a phone call with somebody saying and I, I was given basically given a script when they ask you these questions say this I was like okay you know I'll do anything at this point just want to get out of debt um but this company were, were lovely there was it was literally just this is all the information this is these are all the options. This is what each option means. And you don't have to do any of them. But in your situation, I'd recommend you choose one of them. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so, I, so I did that. So I, they they talked to me about a debt management plan. Um, now, with an IVA, you are protected. Um, the government... Uh, now, you have to do your own research. Don't quote me on this. But the government... I believe have some laws in place where with an IVA you are protected you have, the interest isn't going to be messed about with by the creditors um they're not going to mess around with the amounts that you're paying um there's a certain level of protection there from the government now with a debt management plan there isn't that kind of protection the um the creditors don't have they're not obliged to cut your interest they're not obliged to not change your interest there's no legal protection there but please don't quote me on this do your own research this is just my understanding with the company that were trying to get me to sign up to the IVA they were making it sound like I would have no protection um I'd be messed about and um it's in my best interest to choose an IVA and not a debt management plan but with step change they explained to me that especially with my creditors, because my creditors are all big companies. They're not small, independent ones that can do what they want. They they are, it's NatWest, it's Virgin Money, and it's Halifax. Um, they're big companies. They're not going to be messing about. Um, so she said, your debt, your debt management plan should be fine. We went through some information, um, and I felt happy then to go away and do some research of my own. So I did some research on my own and I came across a company called PayPlan. Now, at this point, I didn't realise that Step Change actually offered debt management plans. Um, so I could have actually sticked, stuck with um, Step Change. But I did my own research, which is probably the best anyway. Um, and I came across a company called PayPlan who also offer debt management plans of different kinds for free. Um so I signed up for a debt management plan. I ended up paying a lot more money than the initial IVA was offering. Um, but that's because we went through my budget really, really um, finely. And we, we touched on everything. And I was really, really honest. Um, and the plan... So I signed up in summer 2023. I think it was summer. It could have been the spring. I can't remember. I signed up in 2023 anyway. And um, I will be paying until, I think, August 2026. So it's three years. Um, I am now um, £15,000 in debt. Now, that £5,000 difference didn't happen in 2023. That was just slowly paying things off. Um, but I've paid off quite a lot in 2023 because of the debt management plan. Um, so basically, I just wanted to let you all know that there is a lot of help out there. If you feel like your debt is getting out of control, if it's affecting your mental health, if it's affecting your quality of life, um, ask for help. There are companies out there 
like Step Change, like Pay Plan, who have your best interests at heart. There's also um, Christian Christians Against Poverty. Um, I believe they also offer um, some debt plans, um, debt advice as well. Um, so there are companies out there that offer free advice and free help to get out of debt. But you have to reach out. You have to do the calling up, you have to do the research. Um, Citizen, Citizens Advice Bureau also can help with directing you to certain people. Um, so do your own research and reach out if you feel you need help getting out of debt. Um, it's It's hard doing it on your own. I just didn't have the mental strength at this point. I was making so many payments and sometimes little payments to credit cards during the month just to hit my minimum um, that it was it become stressful and it was having a negative impact on my mental health. Now, talking about mental health, um, I did at one point, a few years ago, about three years ago, phone up um, Virgin Money and say, I'm, but I'm going to get be behind with my payments because I'm off work with mental health problems and um, I've messed up on my money and I haven't got the money to pay. And they put me through to the, um, there was a mental health department within Virgin Money um, and they froze my account for six months. And they only opened it again after I had an interview convincing them that I was fine. I still went into debt after that, but um, you know, there is help within some of these companies as well. You can phone up and you can say, obviously, if you are genuinely unwell, I hope you get better. But if you are genuinely unwell, you can phone up and you can say, I'm unwell, I need help. Um, so that can be your first port of call. You can also um, have breathing space as well. Um I think it might be 40 days, but please don't quote me on that. Again, and I haven't got the research in front of me. I'm doing this just off the, the cuff. I just wanted to speak about my debt journey. Um, so do your research, but but the, your first port of call might be to phone up your, your creditors and say, I'm struggling. I really want to get out of debt, but I'm just struggling with these payments. So what help can you offer me? Um, so there's that as well. Um, so if you are struggling with debt, phone your creditors, tell them that you're struggling, see if there's any help that you, they can offer you, um, and then seek advice elsewhere. So you could go on to the government website, you could go um, straight to pay plan, step change, Christians Against po Poverty. If there are any others, please leave them in the um, comments. Um, and um, and, I, and I really recommend cash stuffing. If you can, if you have access to your cash in your bank, I recommend cash stuffing. Since October, I did a count up. So October 2023, I counted up my money in December 2023 and I'd actually managed to save over £900 in those two months. Um, and I had no idea that I'd, I had the capability of doing that. Um, and that was just through cash stuffing. It's not magic. It's not, you know, a miracle. It's just that I'm seeing my money. I'm seeing my money. I can see where it's going. I've got money in my in my in my binders here, it all has a different purpose. Yeah, some of it is to be spent. So in these binders, that's these ones are, are, are to be to be spent. This one is to be spent. Um, this one is saving and this one is challenges, which will be allocated, reallocated into the other ones. But it's not just sitting in my account saying, oh, you know that pair of jeans that you saw in the shop window? You've got enough money in your bank to buy those now. Um, it's not like letting me in this rabbit hole of buying everything in my Amazon basket because there's money in my account and it's not me then forgetting that I've got bills to pay at the end of the month um, and I can't because I bought that pair of jeans I bought everything in my Amazon basket and then I forgot to give my kids their pocket money and then I had a bill coming out so Cash stuffing really, really works. And I, and I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that have got themselves out of debt through cash stuffing. They have an envelope in their binder for debt. And that's amazing. And that's what I wanted to do. But I had to just let go of my pride and say, I need help. Now, it might be that at some point I will end my debt management plan and I'll say, do you know what? 
I've got this now. Um, and I may have to, if I, if I make, once I've got my emergency fund fully funded, which should be by the end of February, I did the calculations last night and it's going to be a month earlier than I was originally planning, which is amazing. But if I, um, once I get my emergency fund funded, I will then be putting all of my extra cash towards extra debt payments. Now, if that makes it difficult for my debt management company to continue with a debt management plan, if they are saying, look, if you're paying extra money, you need to increase your payments, then I might say, do you know what? I think I've got this now and I will make extra debt payments to my creditors. Um, or what I'm planning on actually doing is saving up and making quarterly extra debt payments that may be more acceptable to the debt management company because I can just say, look, I've saved this money and I want to make a £500 overpayment. Um, that is the plan. Um, but yeah, so that's my debt story. So I've covered from um, how I didn't really have a lot of discipline or knowledge around money. Uh, we didn't talk about money when I was a kid to um, how my uh, in my marriage I didn't have the reins when it came to finances. It was um, my ex-husband that took care of all that to my um, marriage breakdown and my mental health breakdown, really, um, and how I didn't then look after money at all and I struggled to look after myself and my kids so money was just out the window literally <laughs> um to wanting to take control and not really knowing how and making things worse to my, for myself all the way to now which is I'm actually making controlled payments towards my debt um and I've got a plan to get myself out of debt quicker than um than the debt management plan has initially stated so that is the plan. So if you can relate to anywhere on that journey, let me know. Um, put in the comments where, what stage you're at. Um, are you are you in debt making payments? Have you been in debt? Are you on a debt management plan? Are you on an IVA? Is, is it successful? Um, yeah, I'd really like to know. Um, anyway, thank you for sticking to the end, if you did. And I will see you in my next video. All right then, take care guys, bye.